Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we've got quite a lot to do. We are completing two Orpheus 2 spacecraft on Olympus rockets and those should be done pretty quickly, probably before this Titan shot actually. We've already built, by the way, a Mars class vessel and I have now completely forgotten exactly what the configuration of that is, but not to worry, our Earth to Mars transfer windows in 436 days. It was sort of building in the background in the second slot this whole time, and it just ended up getting built early. So I'll take a look at that when the time comes, but we've got a lot of other things to do. Uh, we'll probably be launching the first Orpheus 2 uh, before we have to take care of this maneuver for the Titan shot. I'm going to be trying to handle either this uh, human orbital 3 in low earth orbit thing or this crew rotation thing. Uh, it's possible that it might be safer actually just to send one Kerbal out to the moon with the Orpheus 2 first because then we'll, we'll only be risking one Kerbal on re-entry, right? Uh, so th there are possibilities. The trick here is that with the human orbital uh, 3 to LEO, um, it needs to be in orbit for 12 days and then splash down. I don't know how it'll deal with it if I also then dock it to the station to do the crew rotation. Uh, whether it'll, uh, Probably it'll want the same three crew to be uh, launched and then retrieved, not a different three crew. So that's the complicated bit. Um, launch a new vessel. It definitely requires a new vessel specifically for this contract. And probably it'll keep track of which three Kerbals we launch on that vessel. So we might not be able to do both of these contracts at the same time. Well now, that is a stouter rocket than I was expecting. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's probably okay uh, for, for a design that's mostly using Soviet engines. Yep, well, actually, the upper stage is uh, J2. But anyway, let us target our station just, uh, just as a likely option. Okay, everything seems to be a go. Ignition. And launch. This rocket has a fairly slow sedate launch. Um, wonder why it's sort of grayish on the VAB right now. Is that the normal VAB color? Maybe it's because we haven't upgraded it yet. Yeah, very stout rocket. And that's mainly because of just trying to fit all the engines on the bottom of this thing. Okay, we are now past the speed of sound, and we will soon be approaching max Q. I actually want to ignite the core engines before separating the boosters, so let's reorganize that a bit. Okay, ignition. We should throttle down here because that's a lot of thrust. Okay, and throttle up and separation. Off they go. Four really big boosters doing the Korolev cross sort of thing. Okay, that appears to be the launch escape system. Let's separate that off. And off that goes. Going for miles and miles, that one. For NK-43s right now. Still got a long way to go to orbit. We have plenty of abort options, by the way. We could shut down this stage if there was some problem with these engines. Just shut down the stage and go to the next stage and we could still get to orbit. We can, You can see our Delta V here. 
part of our goal is to, of course, get to orbit with enough fuel in the upper stage to transfer to the moon, just to demonstrate that we can do that. We're not going this time with these three, but... Important to make sure that can happen. Okay, separation and ignition. Now, of course, having just one engine on this stage does make me a bit nervous, but it is the J2, which is, like, one of the more reliable engines when, I mean, of course, there were issues on the second stage of Saturn V when it was clustered, but otherwise, of course, it was very dependable. And uh, so there's that, but also, at this velocity, if everything goes well with the first and second stages, if something were to go wrong with this stage right now, we do have enough fuel in the service module to get to orbit still. So, there's that too. So, somebody had asked um, how to make good circular orbits, and it, I, don't, I don't pay too much attention to that myself, but in theory what you want to do is keep your time to apoapsis low, and just make sure that um, if you know like uh, right now maybe it'll take another two minutes to do this burn I, I wanna aim for like uh, making sure that half of that time occurs before apoapsis and like half the time occurs after apoapsis I mean just aim for that it won't actually happen that way uh, because as we get closer to apoapsis what's going to happen is that um, more of our velocity is going to be horizontal and we're not going to be going uh, down very steeply so we'll just be hovering around apoapsis is what's going to happen. And so it's uh, also you can think of it, uh, limiting time to apoapsis is also limiting your vertical speed. And what you want is by the end of the burn for the vertical speed to be zero. If the vertical speed is not zero at the end of the burn, you're not going to be able to get a circular orbit because uh, you're still going up at that point. You want it to be flat you'll have some radial velocity, basically. The way I do it in my launch script is uh, right around here I tell it to keep the vertical speed between 20 meters per second and negative 20 meters per second. And so it'll pitch up and pitch down within a certain range to make that happen. So you can see here we're uh, again close to apoapsis and so I want to get a 223 kilometer sort of circular-ish orbit and we can uh, probably with a little bit of judicious pitch uh, get our vertical speed to zero or close to it. As our thrust to weight ratio goes up, of course with a high thrust to weight ratio rocket it's much tougher and you have to be very precise about it, uh, but you'll probably end up pitching down eventually. And shut down. 224 by 215. Again, I'm not particularly bothered with uh, circular orbits, but you do have to sort of shut down pretty quickly if you want to get any closer than that. A KOS would be able to do it closer than that if uh, it does finish to burn right at apoapsis. Oh, game is doing something, probably quick saving or something. Anyway, uh, 3,957 meters per second is plenty. Why don't we uh, keep this here? And we should, uh, for the rendezvous burn, well, let's also check boil off. And then for the rendezvous burn, see what you call it. Uh, if we can relight this, we'll do a relight test before moving on. These RCS thrusters should not be here. Should be down here. So we'll need to see if they're powerful enough to help this relight. But um, also, the thing is, we are carrying the Saturn instrumentation unit. Um, this one, and so that's taking a lot of electric charge. Potentially, I might want to do something about that. I'm gonna activate the CO2 scrubber right now. Maybe uh, I'll go to the. I could get to the service module. I can activate one of the fuel cells. That'll help things out. Okay. Because it's going to be a few hours before we actually get a good approach. 
This is also a good test of how long our electric charge will go with the with the J2 stage attached. Okay, well, I mean, of course, the service module stage should be able to take care of most of the business. It looks like in two hours and five minutes, we can use this stage to do part of it, and also there, test the whole relight thing. We should also test whether it can independently deorbit itself after that. RCS on. Let me make sure everything up there is locked. It should be. It's not showing up any delta V down here. Okay, so node. I'm not seeing any fuel consumption. That's MMH and N204. Are they not properly configured? No, it looks like uh, these RCS ports are not properly configured well. We're going to have to bring in all of the other iterations of the Orpheus rocket to make sure that they are. Or are they just not activated? I mean, I don't think the staging thing is a thing in 1.1.3. Let's just do that. No. The ISB sure makes it seem like they're properly configured. But I guess not. Maybe they were Arizine N204. This MMH N204. We can we can still try a relight test, but we've learned something here. Um, these ports aren't uh, taking fuel from up there. I guess that's all right. We'll test whether the service module RCS can actually sell the fuel down for this. Well, it's already very stable. Okay, that's a minimum. 35 kilometers, sounds good. Okay, so now we're going to flip everything retrograde. so that when we decouple this, because it can't orient itself very well, so we're going to turn it retrograde so that it'll be ready to deorbit itself immediately after decoupling with the rest of the spacecraft. Local control is reading green, so we should have a connection to this once we decouple. And the uh, Saturn Instrument Unit has a 2,000 kilometer Omni range. I guess we won't do the crew rotation thing. Maybe we should just do this crewed orbital contract. Well, it says very stable. Okay, well, I'll go with this angle. Uh, separation. Okay, we need to sidestep that thing. Mm, we should be clear of its path. But uh, let's just make sure. I'll accept the fact that we're going to reduce, uh, I mean, increase our closest approach distance. But this is good. Okay, so now we do have control. We don't have much by way of turnability right now. But the engine is settled. No, it's very unstable. Shoot. Well, that's unfriendly of it. Yeah, well, it's space junk now. I was trying my best. No such luck. Okay, well, we'll have to fix those RCS ports. For now, let's proceed. We don't have solar panels action grouped. Let's make sure that it can recharge itself without the fuel cells. Yep, definitely. No problems. Well, it's curious that it says apoapsis below 300,000 and periapsis above 170,000. Eccentricity below 0 0.0173 and 
then we, we don't exactly have that. Our apoapsis is higher, but it's still counting down the days. But maybe maybe I should do this more legitimately. So less than 300,000 kilometers as well. And that'll do the trick. That should definitely fulfill the requirements. Even though they were counting down anyway. Okay, so I'll wait 12 days and then bring them back down. Okay, it says orbit's completed. You may fire retros when ready. And I'm guessing that if I wait too long, it's going to get irritated. If I try to dock with the station, it's going to get irritated. So I better just bring them back down. Looking at where we are, um, we could probably end up in the South Atlantic if we did the retro burn soon, right around here. Um, or if uh, we're, we're a little bit too steep, we could end up in the Amazon jungle. So that's a possibility. But maybe just a little bit of time warping will ensure South Atlantic. Yeah, I think maybe that'll be good enough. So, retrograde, please. And we'll go in a little bit steeply, uh, just so that it's more like um, return from... Uh, it's nothing like a return from the moon, honestly, but we should be able to go to a 55 kilometer periapsis and still be all right. I'll go to 60, just to be safe. The solar panels do fine, recharging the vessel in low Earth orbit, which means, uh, with Earth, of course, blocking the sun for half of it. Uh, so we didn't need to use the fuel cells for that. So on a journey to moon, the solar panels will be just fine as well, as long as, of course, we use persistent rotation to make sure that we are still facing the sun with them. Okay, now to get rid of the service module, and then we're at the mercy of the RCS ports on the Apollo command module and hopefully they'll work all right. So, separation. Okay, unlock and retrograde please. Looks good. Okay. Okay, here we go, atmospheric interface, and let's turn descent mode on. And we would like surface negative relative velocity, I think roll zero. Okay, and all we really wanted to do is hold roll at the end, but uh, for now I can do this. Our service module is seven kilometers away. We are currently over South America. I'm hoping we'll pass right on by. I guess there's a small chance we could land in Brazil. I mean, not the Amazon part of Brazil, maybe the more populated and friendly part of Brazil. Fewer deadly animals. Actually, I think we have an Orpheus in storage that we can use for the crew transfer mission. So we don't have to... or I mean actually we probably have one of our earlier spacecraft that can do that as well on a smaller Nico rocket instead of launching the big rocket for all of that. Would seem like a waste, right? I'm sure that's why I intended previously. Okay, other things are getting destroyed at a reasonable distance. I don't need to have this hold pitch and yaw anymore. We will just have it hold roll. Still seems to be firing those for some reason though. This is getting a bit red. Hopefully that's just the normal redness of having the heat shield and the pod attached to each other instead of a separate heat shield and pod part. Okay, we are definitely over to South Atlantic now, below 70 kilometers in altitude. We're starting to get proper heat effects. Definitely a very gentle descent. Vertical speed is very moderated right now. I expect that will change. But so far, we're coasting right along. 
Okay, well, with all the lift, it's taken quite a while, but we are now under 5,000 meters per second and coming below 56 kilometers in altitude, still over the South Atlantic, though the sun is uh, setting here, so it's bound to get dark if we go too much further east. G-forces are still increasing. We're approaching two Gs now. Still rather gentle. Of course, this was designed to return from the moon, not from low Earth orbit. It'll be interesting if with this sort of descent mode, if it can really moderate those G-forces to like shuttle levels, that would be pretty good. Okay, the heat effects are diminishing, so that's not too much of a problem. Uh, part of ab our ablator was used about, mm, I don't know, I'll call it a sixth of it. And it looks like our g-forces will peak out at 2.38 g's. So that's excellent, really. And again, I keep this going until we're below the speed of sound because otherwise, of course, going from descent mode on to descent mode off is a pretty quick change because it's a shift in center of mass that's immediate. And I'd rather not do that while it's going supersonic. It's just not a nice thing to do in general. So we'll wait until it's going slower. Alternatively, I could wait until the G-force is lower and maybe risk a slight supersonic velocity. Okay, yeah, I don't like the huge deviation between our retrograde vector and where we're pointing, so I will turn it off now. Whoa. Quick rocking motion. Smart ASS does not need to be on. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the cap now. Okay, cap is loose, and I'm going to arm the parachutes. I think it's just one part. Let me see what the info says about them. Pre-deployment 3,200. Um, give me like 6,000. Okay, we have pre-deployment. Everything is still okay with the contract. And we have full parachute deployment. And slash down of the other bit. 9.1 meters per second though. These parachutes are supposed to be configured for this Apollo module. We're not carrying anything extra. But 9 meters per second, wow. It's a bit excessive, isn't it? Well, at least there's much survival. Well, okay. Yeah, let's recover before it sinks. Okay, no new science. Parts recovered pretty far away from the KSC. Most importantly, our crew was returned and Wilnerd Kerman, our engineer, advanced to level 1. Okay, so let's see what craft do we have. Oh, by the way, our tracking station will be upgraded in like 4 hours. So that's good. Uh, another Orpheus 2. We've got uh, two more Orpheus 2's building. One will be done in 12 days. Still ahead of that Titan shot and maneuver node adjustment. And the next thing we want to do is the crew rotation. But we don't need to use this Orpheus 2 for that. Uh, why don't we just use this Orpheus on a Nico 604? I think that would be reasonable. And uh, Or we could just use the Kelly 4 on Nico 404. Hmm. Though that could be used as a rescue craft. That that one, it's better to have that be a rescue craft because then we don't have to send any Kerbals up on the launch. We just need to bring the Kerbals back down. That's good. I think. But, uh, yeah. Let's roll out this Orpheus and send two Kerbals up to the station in it and do it that way. Okay, so here we go with a launch to the station to deliver two new Kerbals to the station and eventually to retrieve the two that are currently there. We've got Kazu and Alan Kerman here 
And according to the contract, uh, it says rendezvous with uh, Spaceport 2. It actually doesn't say uh, launch a new vessel. I guess we could have just brought the two on the station back, but then we wouldn't have anybody on the station, and that's not nice. Um, so vessel Spaceport 2. Uh, we have to keep the these two on board for 30 days. And um, yeah, and return uh, crew home. So we'll, we'll have to time warp for 30 days. The problem with that is uh, we've got this Titan shot thing for 19, uh, in 19 days. So the way I figure it is we're going to dock over there, rendezvous with Spaceport 2. And then we're going to time warp take care, care of this. And then we're probably going to have to time warp another 30 days. Um, and then we'll bring the two that are supposed to come back back. I think that's going to be how it works, but I'm not totally sure. Let's hope. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're lined up with the station. Thrall is up. SAS is on. Um, distance to target is pretty high, though. So where is it? Maybe we can time warp a little bit so that it comes around and we can make the rendezvous a little bit easier. All right, and this is the old Orpheus uh, spacecraft. It doesn't have the upgraded solar panels, but it's not supposed to do anything too complicated here. So here we go, ignition. Okay, there we go. Oh, come on. Ignite, ignite. And launch. And throw me down during time warp, darn it. But that's all right, these guys have multiple ignitions. Unfortunately, I use both of those ignitions right there. I do have to remember to fix those RCS ports on the Orpheus, though. Well, I should really throw down here. Keeping everything flat, because we have plenty of time to have lapses right now. Okay, throw all back up, separation, and they just Okay, dumping the launch escape system to see what we're, we've really got as far as stage time. Four minutes. Well, that's plenty of time to apoapsis to do four minutes. Sure gets out there. It's already ten kilometers away. It's not like we're not accelerating in that direction either. The launch escape system is pretty vigorous. Okay, I forgot that these engines don't throttle. Oops. So we're not going to have a nice circular orbit. We're going to have a pretty crazy orbit. Yeah, that's not good. Alright. Um, right. Well, at least we're going up. Alright, separation. And ignition, though we don't want to do too much right now. Just need to get away from that stage, which should deorbit because it's got one in suborbital. That's a plus. Okay. Okay, well, this maneuver will not only get us into orbit, but it'll also get us a uh, five kilometer separation at the station right there, so we can rendezvous with the station in one orbit. So that's pretty great, considering how weird our initial burn, uh, how weird the orbit is that our initial burn got us to. So yeah, we don't have a whole lot of fuel. We've got 1,100 meters per second, but and this is an odd radial burn here of 362 to pull our apoapsis down and raise our periapsis. Here we go. Okay, at this point I'm just watching that closest approach distance. Hopefully we won't have too much relative velocity with respect to the station once we get there. It looks like 21 kilometers is actually the minimum there. I'll take it for now. We might leave this vehicle attached to the station as sort of a escape craft, because it can carry three, and instead bring two back on a Kelly spacecraft. 
Well, we are now within render range of the spaceport, and there is some lag, but it's not too bad. Okay, taking a look at spaceport 2, which side are we coming in from? Okay, well, if it's coming in from there... Perhaps we can attach it to this end here. That seems like the best idea. You know, for larger spaceports, the fact that you can't select a docking port until you're like 200 meters away is a bit annoying. Okay, getting lined up here, slowing down. Okay, there we go. Right? Come on. Right. Okay, all connected up. There it is. The Orpheus spacecraft now docked to the station. What does everything say here? We rendezvoused. Uh, well, it's, it has a check mark. Keep at least two crew aboard the station for 30 days. It's already checked that off. Um, will it be alright if we uh, take the crew down now? Because it's check marked those two. Land or splash down on Earth. Will it be alright if I put those two in that and bring them down? I guess we could send them over here and see what happens. Wow, this uh, spaceport right now with the spacecraft attached has a crew capacity of 29. Well, it looks like two are already in the Gemini cabin. Let's just make sure. Yeah, uh, Chris Leon and Gus Fred. They've definitely been here for more than 30 days. Incidentally, our food supply, water supply, and oxygen supply are great. With four crew on the station, it's uh, more than a year's worth. So no problems there at all. But yeah, let's bring some folks back home, I guess. Uh, we'll, we'll just decouple, undock, and see if the contract agrees with this assessment says track vessel spaceport 2 I don't know um, well will this count if we bring them back down here anyway it'll be a proper crew rotation darn it this is what's happening right now it's it's an actual crew rotation I don't know what this vessel is called right now um, rename vessel well, this is definitely not called sta uh, Spaceport 2. But these are the two crew members that stayed more than 30 days on the station. That's definitely not the two that we just brought up. What can I do? Okay. Let's assume that this is going to work. <laughs> okay, going away from the station now. God, the lag is real. Lots of Delta V in this one. It's much lighter than the Apollo Command module, after all. Okay, we are now getting further and further away from the station. Let's uh, just make sure that we're going to be pointed retrograde. We should just produce a whole lot more of these too, just for Kerbals to get around easier. It's not so good to have the Orpheus one actually, for just going around low Earth orbit. This has plenty of Delta V to, you know, do minor adjustments between orbits and rendezvous with different spaceports. I mean, we don't really have any other spaceport. We docked our first spaceport to this one now, and so it's just one single complex. Hmm. Anyway. We should retro burn over Australia in order to splash down in the Atlantic, so let's do that. 
let's keep it to that. I'm going to actually maybe a little bit softer on the whole re-entry. These guys are not going to have the 2G re-entry that we saw with the Orpheus vehicle. Everything seems to be fine as far as that stuff's concerned. We've got the locked fuel for the RCS thrusters up there. Got some locked hydrogen and oxygen for some reason there. A little bit of a waste. I should have transferred all the food, water, and oxygen in, well, the water and oxygen in this over to the station instead. And there's some food here too. Yeah, that's a bit of a miss on my part. Still, it's not like the station is short of supplies, but still, in principle, it would have been better to do that. Okay, um, as we get further down, we'll dump the service module. We'll need to dump it right now. So, two crew missions and two crew returns is what we're aiming for for this episode, but we'll also take care of this Titan shot thing. So, hopefully. Uh, we will also complete this contract, so also two contracts complete is important. And then next time what we're going to do is we're going to launch a crew into orbit around the moon and also launch our spaceport into orbit around the moon. And that's what I plan to do, but before this episode ends I want to take care of that maneuver node for the Titan shot. Okay, let's dump the service module here. Everything seems to be good. Make sure that's actually going down. Okay, unlocking the fuels. Okay, we've reached the service module destruction stage. Um, can't really. Uh, there it is. Oh, it's a little bit closer to us than it was with the Orpheus, isn't it? But uh, yep, still a safe distance away, I guess. Let's stop pitch and yaw being controlled. Temporarily turn this off to make sure it's not. Still seems to try and control pitch and yaw even if you uh, deselect it and press execute unless you actually turn Smart ESS off sometimes. So where are we? Uh, no, not there. We are uh, currently uh, Passing over Mexico and over the Gulf of Mexico now. Um, we should go past uh, Yucatan, Peninsula. Yucatan Peninsula. We should go past the Yucatan Peninsula and end up over maybe south of Cuba here somewhere. Okay, I take it back. Not really south of uh, Cuba so much as Maybe north of Costa Rica? Yeah, the descent mode on the Gemini capsule definitely doesn't pitch up as much as the Apollo command module does. This leads to much more G-force from low Earth orbit return. Okay, flame effects diminishing. We're at 43 kilometers in altitude, 3,200 meters per second. G-forces peaking around 4 Gs. Not bad. Not bad at all. And a blader loss, uh, not that much actually. Yeah, about 15% or so. Of course, this is a lunar rated heat shield at the bottom here. It's a separate heat shield from the cap seal itself, which also has a blader on it that is completely covered by the heat shield right now. Okay, uh, turning the set mode off. That off. Okay, it's all up to the parachutes now. Okay, drug shoots are out. Main chutes have pre deployed. Nice inviting waters down there. Very good. And here we go. Oh! Nope, let's reduce the physical time warp. Um, I don't know if it counts this as land or splashdown. I think it wants Spaceport 2 itself to land or splashdown? I don't know. Let's recover vessel. 
Okay, well actually the game just crashed. This could complicate matters even further. Okay, well where are they? I guess... Okay, it shows them in the Gemini cabin, so they're definitely out there somewhere. They're not retrieved yet. Let's see. Splash down at Earth. Okay, I should just be able to recover, right? Okay, recovery of a vessel, but it didn't count that as a crew rotation thing. Because now it thinks that Spaceport 2 is supposed to land or splash down. I think that's an unreasonable thing to expect. At least these two got some extra experience. That's good. But... I think... Yeah, I think uh, we should just force that contract to be complete. Well, I'll get your input on that. I think uh, Alt F12 contracts... Mm, it's the station crew rotation. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you guys to say whether you want me to uh, force complete that. Uh, our two crew members definitely did spend more than 30 days up there, by the way. So, I mean, we built a bunch of Orpheus spacecraft in the meantime. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave that as a question mark. I'll take care of this maneuver node off camera. So I'll just wrap it up here and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.